Hi, and welcome back to Middleism Apologetics. My name and your host is Stephen Woodson. I'm so glad to be able to be here with you guys. I'm glad you guys are following along and watching. Um, several announcements I made in my last video about my book. Um, yeah, this is not the book yet. This is just the cover. This is what it's going to look like. Um, get it on screen here a little bit and, and focused a little bit, but uh, that will be it. Uh, we're working on that to get that out there and published. My first book, of course, is Middleism Eschatology, which you can find under my name at Amazon.com. Um, and we talked about in the last video what that was about in this one here. Uh, but I just got to plug it in because it goes a, through a theology of, of all these things that we are dealing with against preterism. But right now we're making our way through 1 Corinthians 15. We're not having to do 200 videos to do it. We have 10 videos here and we're keeping it brief and simple. Uh, we're not having to drag in uh, 20 other thousand things from every other place to, to confuse the whole thing. Um, we're keeping it simple to the text and what it's been saying because that's what the Corinthians would have understood strictly from this text uh, to do a more expounding exegesis course than we would bring in other things. But first of all, we want to understand what the text says in itself and look at the logics that are, that are in there. And in the last video, we talked about how the body is being called a body of flesh, um, and it's a body that is given by God, designed by Him. Uh, the old body goes in the round, ground, what comes out is completely different. Um, and so this is what Paul continues on in verse 42, and that's where we'll pick it up. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable, what is raised is imperishable. He is beginning to describe what the body is like. So, the old body has been put into the ground. Dead people, that's the subject. Remember, those who have fallen asleep. He says that way back up in verse 18. Uh, For those also who have fallen from Christ have perished. So, we're talking about physically dead here, not spiritually dead. Spiritually dead haven't perished. Uh, but only people who have died who are not been spiritually reborn are the ones who are going to be perishing. Not those that are in Christ. Those who have fallen asleep in Christ. Those that are Christians. So yes, we're talking about people who have died who are Christians. That's what this whole thing is about. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. Now, again, I'm going to bring this out a, for a third time for people like Julianne and, and others that are on that Facebook page. Uh, resurrection of the dead. The Greek there is Anastasis Necron. Anastasis, standing again, dead Necron. Necron, corpse, not dead ones. The standing again of the corpse. So, in the examples in the Bible, whenever a person died, and there's all kinds of examples, they died and they were brought to life. Uh, especially of Lazarus, what happened. It was his body that was put in the ground, and it was body came out. This was not the first, uh, first fruits resurrection or anything else. Um, his body was not raised up glorious because he died later again anyway. The point is, is that it was the standing again of his corpse that we see. And corpses come out of grave or tombs. Uh, so this is what we're talking about. This is subject. So, so what is the resurrection of the dead? It is the standing of, of, uh, of a corpse. So it is with the standing again of the corpse. What is sown is perishable. Now perishable is a term that is only used concerning the body. And of course our bodies are perishable, meaning that it grows old. For the minute we're born, we are heading towards death. We're going to grow old and die. And this body is perishable. Uh, it also refers to the idea that it can be damaged, it can be hurt, uh, it can suffer diseases and sickness um, and different things and uh, become lame, blind, deaf, dumb. There's all kinds of things that can happen, but it is perishable. It is subject to those forces. But what is raised is imperishable. Uh, imperishable means that this body that we get raised in is no longer capable of getting sick, no longer capable of being deformed or, or malformed or anything else. Now, I'm going to bring this up here and, and make this very, very clear. 
Jesus was raised with his wounds in his hands and his side and feet. And people say, see, he was raised up in the same body. It was no different. It wasn't changed because he had his wounds. And you think that we get a body, when we get in the body, that we'll have our wounds. So if people are deaf or dumb or missing an arm, lame leg, that when they get raised, that they're going to be in the same kind of body. You know, I mean, gee, we're going to have our wounds just like he did. You know, if I was beat and scarred up, I'll have the same wounds. Uh, no, not even close. His wound, he was wounded for our transgressions, uh, for our sin, not because he smoked cigarettes, drove a motorcycle, and crashed, got drunk, or any other stupid thing that happens to people. Nor was it because he got sick uh, and some kind of disease that ravaged his body, like leprosy or something like that. Uh, none of those things. Um, his wounds were for us. They are the reminder of, of, of what he did for us. That's why he was raised. This is the reminder, guys. And to me, if I was to see God and, and, and touch those wounds, it, that's the reminder, people, that he died for me. That's the reminder. Um, there's no shame. There is no dishonor in that. There is nothing that, that says that is bad or terrible or anything else. Um, <laughs> not all wounds are, are, are terrible. Um, I, I don't think you guys get that. Full prior is just, they're just not understanding that point. So, yes, it is the same body that is raised. Ours is changed. Um, we are raised imperishable. We are no longer going to be any of those things that we were before. This body is, is going to be perfected, made weak, and I, we'll go on there in a minute. Um, so, that is the hope and the glory of the resurrection is that we will be raised to new life in a body that is created and designed by him that is made perfect and complete um, no longer subject to any of those things and if you look at, at revelations 21 and 22 where heaven and earth pass away we are no longer subject to sleep uh eating you know is not so that we can stay alive it's for the pleasure of it um think about and i went back and i talked about in the book um, about Adam when he was in the garden. They were given the animals for their pleasure. They were given the beautiful garden for their pleasure. Uh, the smells, the sights, and the sounds that they had there. That was all created for Adam for his pleasure. Uh, the fruits and the trees were created for his pleasure, and they were given to him for food, um, which does not imply that they had to eat it in order to stay alive. Um, if you want to eat a food, Eat of the green, eat of the grass, and the things uh, that he gave you. I just, I'm sorry, um, it's kind of illogical to think that he gave it to them so that they could just starve to death one day because they don't have food. Um, no, Adam and Eve, I don't know how else to put it. I'm sitting there thinking through these things. Why did the animals have to eat them? Why did they eat? Well, there's the sense of before... Uh, before the fall that he placed those things and they and they continued after there's a continuation of, of that part of it of, of having to eat um, to sustain animals and the bodies but I don't think it was the same thing for human life that they had to eat to sustain it because it is Christ that that makes us alive because in the resurrection afterwards are you going to sit there and tell me that somebody who has a resurrected perfect body has to eat in order to stay alive Oh, you didn't eat today. You're gonna, or you have to sleep, or you have to go bathroom. And put, I don't think we understand the full thing of it. We don't. But the idea is, is that we are made, going to be made immortal. Uh, let me go on here. Verse forty-three. It is sown in dishonor. It goes into the ground dishonorable. The body is dishonorable. It is not great. It is not uh, wonderful. Being subject to all of those things, but it is raised in glory. Meaning. Um, <laughs> Again, the intrinsic worth and the value of that body that comes out speaks to God and His glory. How great He is. We are a reflection then. We come, become a reflection of God's great work of what He wants to do in people. We can't say that before the resurrection in these lowly bodies. This is damaged by because of Adam. But once we are raised in this imperishable body... Um, it speaks to the glory of God, and it speaks to his, his value that he put on this body in order to change it. 
what is sown is perishable, what is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. Uh, and that, that to me is very interesting, the whole idea of weakness being is, again, you know, be, being subject to uh, the elements, being subject to the physics of, of this life, the things that we can and cannot do. Uh, in my dreams, of course, I can fly, and to me that's kind of like the same thing. Uh, in our weaknesses and things like that, we can't fly, we can't do certain things, but it, it is raised in power. And I see, uh, I equate that to the power, for example, of Christ being able to walk into a room where the door, front door was locked. Um, being in one place here and then in another place on the other side of the world in, in moments. Um, not being subject to uh, to anything. It, it's I picture that it's like somebody coming up and shooting you with a gun. And it's not going to work. It's not going to hurt. Uh, it's not going to do anything to us because the body has been made powerful. There's a power of God working through it that makes it immortal and, immortal and imperishable. Um, it be, comes glorious and powerful. So it is sown a natural body, the natural body, the lowly body that goes into ground, but it is going to be raised a spiritual body. Now here's the key thing, people, in this all. If you don't hear anything else, you want to argue with anything else, here it is. It is raised a spiritual body. It is a glorious body. It's still a body. That's the noun, a body. This is my body. It houses my spirit. A body always houses the spirit. A body is always made in flesh. It is never always physical. A body is always physical. You can't have a spirit body, meaning a body that is spirit. Why? Jesus, when he was raised, when he came to them, they were scared and everything else. And he, what did he say? He said, what? Um, Touch me and feel me. For a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. Spirits do not have physical flesh. They do not have bodies. They do not have anything physical about it. They are immaterial. Um, they are like the wind. You can pass your hand through them and that is completely, completely immaterial to it. So it just does not affect it one way or the other. Oh, somebody's trying to call me on the thing. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, but anyway, uh, it is raised power. It is so natural. It is raised a spiritual body. Now, the word spiritual there means... Um, he's still trying to call. Spiritual means... I'm hoping this isn't... I turned off the uh, speakers. I hope it doesn't cut off anything else, right? Uh, a spiritual means... It, dis, it, it is... A, uh, an adjective it describes the body what kind of body is it it's a spiritual one well didn't we just talk a little bit before in the other one that the body is being created by God um, so it is a spiritual body meaning it is from a heavenly realm it is created by God it is made for that spiritual realm to live in that spiritual realm if Christ ascended in a spiritual body uh, one that was changed in mortal all that then he is in heaven in that spiritual mortal body um, and it doesn't change. So spiritual is only describing the source, the quality of that body. And that body comes from heaven. Remember Paul said uh, they all ate spiritual food in the wilderness. Well, that was manna. Was manna made by man or did it come down from heaven from God? It was something that God did himself and made himself. It was spiritual food. Uh, and that's all it is saying there. It is not saying that the body is going to be in a spirit form or spirit uh, because spirit means breath, rock, the pneuma, the something invisible and intangible. You can't catch air in my can and say, ooh, can you feel the air? The only time I feel air, of course, is when the wind blows and gets me. But I can't hold it. I can't touch, the, uh, touch it and physically feel it. And it's the same thing that a spirit, you can never do those things with. So a, a spirit body is an oxymoron, jumbo shrimp. I'm sorry, the two of them do not work together in that sense. Uh... You can't have a body made of nothing. And a spirit is nothing. It's just air. Um, but then we've never seen a ghost. Who's ever seen a ghost? I mean, if a ghost walked in here, we wouldn't know, really. Um, okay, enough of that. Casper the ghost, right? 
Uh, so it is raised to spiritual body. So if there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. And that's the point he's getting across and through there. Um, the lowly body. What is raised is imperishable. The body that is sown in dishonor, that body is raised in glory. That body is sown in weakness. It is the spiritual body. It is raised in power. The natural lowly body is sown a natural body, but it is raised a spiritual body. Uh, everywhere you say it, <coughs> through these passages right here, 42 to 44, it is talking about the physical body. The corpse. The dead body that went into the ground that was acting like a seed into the tomb. It comes out. It is raised. It is resurrected. It is standing again. That corpse is standing again. Uh, and this is from the Greek people. This is the Greek meaning. I, you know, you can't say the standing again of a corpse is a spiritual uh, death and coming back to spiritual life. Uh, it just doesn't work. Just doesn't work. This is the literal understanding. You can't have that analogy being applied uh, to an analogy. Because Christ physically raised, we are raised. We, we become the analogy of what he did based on what he did. It is natural, and it goes to the spiritual, as some people tried to argue. But the idea is that it is very physical body. And because we were physically raised, we were also spiritually raised. Um, I'm going to end it with that. Um, in our next part, uh, part 8, we will be dealing with verse 45 through 49. Um, some very important things there. Uh, to get across. Thank you guys for sticking around um, and being able to listen. Um, you guys have a good day. Remember to subscribe and like 